billahi min ash shaytanir rajeem and whenever he whenever uh, he says like that all of a sudden shaytan he comes to me and says you have no idea how many people i have gotten with that same way we know that it's shaytan we know that it's shaytan if he's coming to you and telling you about something that's very easy now don't always don't also get into the same problem because one of the problems we have nowadays is that we think to ourselves that this deen this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this deen of Allah azza wa jalla we get to the thought when we think to ourselves that this is a burden we start thinking to ourselves oh man I gotta pray man this is so complicated whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he revealed in the Quran, he said, Audhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ida jaa al-nasrullahi wal-fatih, wa ra'ayta al-nas yarakhuluna fi dini allahi afwaja. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, that with the help of Allah, when the help of Allah comes in victory, and you see the people flocking, coming in crowds, accepting Islam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed this after the conquest of Mecca. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al Aziz. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He is Al Azim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is Mulkul Malik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Almighty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't need His creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has created all and He does not need His creation. And His creation needs Him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't need the help of the Sahabi to defeat. He didn't need the help of the Sahabi to conquer Mecca and to cleanse the Kaaba, to cleanse the Kaaba of the idols that were situated around it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He didn't need any of these things. But what He did is that He allowed them to come and be a part of that celebration. The conquest of Mecca, it wasn't a war, it was a celebration. It was a celebration of the cleansing of the Kaaba celebration of the removing of the idols and to the firmness and the set stronghold of Islam in Mecca and bringing back of the mother of the cities of bringing back the mother of the cities to Tawheed of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now as it is this deen, it doesn't need me. It doesn't need the brother Hamza who's doing the camera work. It doesn't need me, it doesn't need you, it doesn't need anybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing, all hearing. He is al Hayu Qayyum. Allah is ever living. Allah is ever sustaining. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need water, he doesn't need food, he doesn't need us, he doesn't need me, he doesn't need you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has given us the means in this deen as a benefit only to ourselves. Getting back to the subject Shaitan who is our enemy he will try and trick us in any way. There was one time there was a man he came out of his house and he was going to the masjid. When he was going to the masjid he ends up that somehow his clothes they got dirty. Something splashed on him or something like that. So he goes back to his house. When he changes his clothes, he comes back out. And he's going back again to the masjid. And again, his clothes, they get dirty. So he goes back to his house, he changes his clothes, and he goes back to the masjid. And I forget if it happened on only the second time or the third time. But shaitan, he came to him. A man, he came to him. Very old, old man, he came to him. In this form, he came to him. And he said, let me help you. He said, let me help you get to where you need to go. He said, okay. 
So he's walking with them and he's bringing them and he's, and he's making sure that nothing touches him, nothing hurts him, nothing gets in his way. And he finally he gets them up there to the front door of the masjid. He gets them to the walkway, the hallway of the masjid. And he's there and he's holding his hand. He's like, oh, you're such a good person. You're such a nice person. Allah give you this, Allah give you that. Ah, da, da. And he said, okay, you know, come on, let's go pray. And he says, no, 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 I, I'm not going in. He says, you brought me all the way here and now you're going to come in and you're not going to pray? He said, do you know who I am? And the man, he said, he said no, I don't know. I have no idea who you are. And he says, I'm shaitan. And he said, what? You're shaitan? Why did you do such a good thing? He said, I didn't do any good thing. And the man, he looks at him and he says, what? You know, you helped me get all the way here, but you know, you're saying that you didn't do any good thing. What are you talking about? You didn't do any good thing. He said, I didn't do any good thing. You know, I, I, I refuse to say that I did any good thing. He's like, you know, why then did you do this? He said, every time that you came out of your house and you got dirty, you went back to your house and you changed your clothes. And then you, but you went out of the house to come back to the masjid. And you were walking towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And each time that you came out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He was raising your status with Him. Each time you were raising your status. And I want to keep you where you're at. I don't want you to get any higher. I want to keep you down. And in another story, there was one time there was a big king. Very, very big king. Very big ruler. And he used to get up pray Qiyam al -Lam. It was a very righteous person, mashaAllah. And one of the nights, Shaitan somehow, he came to him. And he slept through. And he woke up and it was fudge time. And the remorse set into his heart. And he couldn't stand it. And he cried the whole day. The whole day he cried. And then that night he goes to sleep. And he wakes up to somebody shoving him. Wake up, wake up. It's time for Kiyam Alev. This is a king. He's got guards all over his compound. So he grabs the hand of the person. And he says, who are you? How did you get in? And he says, let go of me, let go of me. And he says, who are you? How, did, how, did, how was it that you got in? He says, I'm Shaitan. The Shaitan, what made you do such a good thing? You're, you're like my enemy. What made you? He said, I didn't do any good thing. I didn't do any good thing. Why, why was it that you, that you were waking me up and came a little then? He said, yesterday I came to you and I made sure that you didn't wake up and came a little. And then the whole day you were crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He was raising your status with Him. And I want to keep you where you're at. This is shaitan. Shaitan, even if you're the righteous, pious person, He wants you more. One of the brothers that was here, I remember one time, his name is Hassan. Hassan uh, Abdullah. Or Hassan Abdul Hakim. I'm forgetting his last name. But there's a brother that he accepted Islam. Alhamdulillah. He accepted Islam some time ago, some 20 years ago, somewhere around there. And he was telling me at the time that he sat there with his mother at the table, the kitchen table. And he said, my mom, I started to cry at the condition that she was in because she was going blind from diabetes and she wasn't able to take care of herself too well anymore. And he said, I had to wipe a tear away and make sure that she couldn't see me crying. And she said, Heston, sometimes I have dreams. And sometimes I have visions. And she went quiet for some time as she was staring into the living room, he said, in the blank stare. She said, sometimes I have visions that of all of my children, all of my seven children, the one who Satan wants the most is you. That's what she said to me. The reason why, brothers and sisters in Islam, the reason why is because he had kalimah. 
La ilaha illallah, Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Shaitan, he doesn't want the average 9 to 5 Joe hanging out, going to church on Sundays. Allah, the Shaitan, he doesn't want the average Buddhist. He doesn't want the Hindu. He doesn't want anybody else. He, well, who does he want? He doesn't want the atheist. He wants you. He wants the Muslim to slip from where they're supposed to be to lower than that. Any inch that he can get. Any inch that he can get from you, he'll take. As is the old American English saying, if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. And this is shaitan. This is your enemy. What can you do though? He's your enemy. He's there, behind you, in front of you. At all times. What can you do? Stay in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay in wudu for as long as possible. And stay in remembrance of the problems that shaitan will bring you and the signs of shaitan. This is what we can do. And I'm not just saying, I'm not saying this in a lecture, I'm saying this for myself. And I'm saying this in hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have mercy upon me and He'll save me from shaitan. And I'm sure that He's going to be bothering me for the next couple of days for speaking about Him. But inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me the tawfiq do good, inshallah, inshallah, I mean. But this is shaitan, before you go to sleep, it's very simple, it takes only five minutes. I remember one time I was sitting in the masjid, and the sheikh Yusuf Esses, he was saying that sometimes shaitan will come to me whenever I'm finishing the salah. So when I finish the salah, I'm thinking to myself, man, I gotta get back, I gotta get back to work, oh, man, I got this video to do, I got that video to do, I gotta hurry up, I, I gotta hurry up, I gotta go, I gotta go. And then I think to myself, well, I got to make the dhikr. And he said that I go to make, and I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking to myself, well, it's also sunnah that I can go and I can just do, you know, ten times. Ten times is also sunnah that says, subhanAllah, ten times, alhamdulillah, ten times, Allah Akbar, ten times. And he says, when I get halfway through, I think to myself, well, I'm already halfway through, let me just finish it. So within this, within this, is that the more that you stay in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with not just your lips or your mind, your hands, but in your heart, the more that you stay in that dhikr, the more that you will stay protected from shaitan, inshallah, I mean. And before you go to sleep, just a few, just one ayah, one ayah of the Quran, ayah of Qursi, and you're safe from shaitan as is in the Sahih Hadith. This is the deen. Is that know your enemy? There used to be an old Rage Against Machine song called "Know Your Enemy," and I, I remember that song very very well. And whenever the brother came to me and he asked me about doing this video, I thought to myself, I was like, "Man, so we're gonna have the title Know Your Enemy,' just like the old Rage Against Machine song." And for those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And so as it is, right, this is our deen. Protect yourself. Build up your arsenal. Build up your weaponry. Build up your armor against your enemy. Who is shaitan? As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.